So is it possible to replace each Google service with a more privacy friendly alternative? That's the question, uh, what we're talking about here today with Ed Bide. And Ed, you know, uh, Google, it's such a big part of our life or for most of us. So why are people nervous or why should we be nervous? Well, I think there's been a lot of focus on privacy in the last couple of years, most of it driven by uh, Facebook and Google. And, and the thing about both of those companies, the thing they have in common is that their entire business model is based on advertising and that advertising engine, which is worldwide and the two companies collectively control, you know, about 70% of digital advertising, you know, their, their entire advertising uh, engine is based on collecting information. You know, it's interesting because Google's mission statement is organizing the world's information. But in order to do that, they need to collect all of your personal information too. And, you know, they use that for a lot of very useful personal services. Uh, a lot of things that, you know, we, we just can't do without. But uh, a lot of people are concerned about the fact that that business model means that they're building an incredibly detailed picture of you and that makes people nervous and they wanna find alternatives. Yeah, most definitely. And when you and when you talk about uh, Google Ed, obviously you start you know with uh, your mobile device. So I know that you've uh, taken some steps here to start figuring this out, starting with the mobile. Right, I you know, one of the interesting things that I get to do as part of my job is to switch back and forth every few months between uh, be between devices, because that's the only way, you know, you need to use a device for a couple months to really understand how it works. Um, but, you know, so lately I've switched back to an iPhone from, from Android, and it's, you know, it's really striking the difference between the two platforms. Um, in addition to privacy, I mean, you know, there's only two platforms, right? There's Android, and there's iPhone and there, there really aren't any, there used to be, you know, Windows phone and Blackberry and all that stuff, but those are, those are long gone. You know, if you want to get out of the Google ecosystem right now, that means embracing Apple and, and getting an iPhone. I, I did have some people talk to me and say, well, what about the Android open source project, which is, you know, that's, that's Android, but it doesn't have the Google stuff in it. And the problem with that is, that it doesn't have the Google Play services in it. It doesn't have the Google Play Store. Uh, it doesn't have the access to the services that, that make it possible. So it's technically possible to use an Android device without Google, but it's really an inferior experience. So for me, it has to start with an iPhone. And you get, besides the privacy stuff, one of the interesting benefits that you get from that is you get access to updates on a regular basis. And, you know, it's, it's interesting because with an Android device, uh, which are provided by, you know, different OEMs like Samsung and LG and HTC, you know, companies like that, uh, and your mobile carrier, uh, you, you don't necessarily know if or when you're ever going to get an update. And one of the things about the uh, iPhone platform is those updates come every year like clockwork and they're delivered to you, uh, you know, in, without any delay. Yeah, that's uh, very true there, uh, Ed. And you know, with Google though, it doesn't it doesn't just stop with our mobile devices. I mean, it, Google is entrenched in our lives in so many other ways. Yeah, it sure is. Uh, you know, Google's a verb these days. Um, and and so if you want to if you want to reduce the influence of Google on your life, then there's two things that you also have to look at. Two of the big pillars of of Google's business, uh, and the first of those is the browser. Uh, Google, Pro, Google Chrome, which has been around for more than a decade, is by far the dominant browser these days. But there are alternatives. Uh, you know, you've got uh, on iOS devices and Macs, you've got Safari. Uh, you've got Firefox, which is making a bit of a resurgence these days. There's an interesting uh, privacy-focused new browser called Brave which comes from the guy who was the original founder of Mozilla. Um, and that uh, blocks all sorts of tracking right out of the gate. Uh, and for me, the dark horse and the one that I've been using more uh, uh, lately than anything else is the new Microsoft Edge, which is based on the same Chromium code as Google's Chrome, uh, but it has tracking protection built into it. And when you go into the settings and you click the strict setting, uh, one of the things you can check and see which 
forms of tracking have been blocked. And on my computer, when I looked at it, uh, the number one tracking source that was blocked was Google. Uh, so, you know, you've got, you've got that. Now, the second thing, of course, is the search engine. And uh, it's a little harder to find alternatives there. Uh, there's Bing, which is Microsoft's alternative to Google. And you know, Bing is sort of a punchline to a bunch of people. Uh, you, you know, it's an easy, if you're looking for a laugh, you, know, you, can, you can say Bing instead of Google and, and you'll get a giggle from people out of it. But Microsoft has spent a lot of money and actually built a pretty good business around Bing. And what it is essentially is a counterweight to Google. So uh, you can just use Bing, and if you do that, then you're in Microsoft's advertising ecosystem instead of Google's. The difference there is that Microsoft isn't, doesn't have uh, such a big economic incentive to uh, collect data from individuals. But if, that's, if that still makes you nervous, and it does make some people nervous, then there's two other alternatives that I identified. One is a product called DuckDuckGo, which um, has a great name, uh, very, very privacy focused. It draws data from about 400 different sources, one of which is Bing. Um, and you, know, you can set it as your default search engine and you're out of Google. Uh, the other is one called startpage.com, which uh, draws its search results primarily from Google but it also is very privacy focused. Um, it's from the Netherlands. And so for people who really get nervous about those Google search results, uh, there are alternatives available. Yeah, I like that duck, 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 go. It's definitely, a, it catches your eye, your ear for sure. Uh, all right, so Ed, you, you covered browser and search engines. So if those are out of the way, then are you, you you're covered, you're Google free? Well, there's still a few more things that uh, I suspect a lot of people have some traces of Google still in their everyday life. Uh, probably the biggest one uh, that isn't in the things we've talked about already is Gmail. Uh, you know, everybody's got a Gmail account, it seems like. It's free, uh, it's been around since, uh, since 2004 um, when it was first released as a beta. Uh, but there are alternatives to it and it's fairly easy to switch. Uh, you know, the, the obvious alternative, and you know, with many of these it's, the, the scale that you need to do these things means that you're probably going to be going to Microsoft or Apple for those. And both of those companies have uh, email products that they offer. In the case of Microsoft, it's Outlook.com, which is a pretty good email service. It's, it's also free and you can uh, forward, your e forward your messages from your Gmail account to Outlook.com and let that take over as your primary email account. For business, you know, if you work for a company like we do that uses uh, Gmail or G Suite as, uh, as its primary email source, you can't escape that for work, but you can for your, uh, for your home email. But if you have control over your work email, you have lots of choices. The obvious one is Office 365, the paid plans from Microsoft. Uh, but there's also, you know, from various companies, there's Intermedia, which offers hosted exchange that, uh, that, isn't, uh, it, that isn't on Microsoft servers, but is run by Intermedia. And there's also even companies like GoDaddy, which can resell Office 365 and, uh, and give you an independent uh, work-related email that uh, isn't from Google or from Microsoft. Um, you know, there's also G Suite, uh, the uh, Google Docs, Google Sheets, uh, and you know the other things that they do that are for collaborating on business related documents. The obvious place to switch for those is Office 365. Uh, there's Google Voice. Uh, a surprising number of people have, uh, have, have one of the free Google Voice phone numbers. And uh, I couldn't find a free service that I could recommend as an alternative to Google Voice, but there is a paid product called Line2 that, uh, that works pretty well. And I've switched my Google Voice uh, uh, number over to that one. And then, then there's a couple that just that are really hard to pry yourself away from. One is Google Maps. And uh, if you're going to use an iPhone, you can use Apple Maps. And Apple Maps had a pretty rocky start a few years ago. You know, people driving 
off of, you know, uh, <laughs> off of bridges and stuff because the maps weren't up to par. Apple Maps is a lot better these days than it was back then. But I know for a lot of people, giving up Google Maps isn't really an option. And the other one is YouTube, uh, because there's frankly no alternative to the content that's on YouTube. So the only real option that you have with that is to you know, go to someplace like DuckDuckGo or Bing and then search for results. And you can usually watch those YouTube clips in the browser and uh, you're not signed into YouTube and you're not leaving a footprint on Google servers. But, you know, it's just one of those things where it's impossible to get Google out of your life completely. And for most of us, we don't really want to. The goal instead is to reduce the amount of tracking that you have. And, you know, that's what I've tried to do with this article. Yeah, very good. You're, you're definitely giving us a lot to think about, uh, a, a lot of things to consider here, Ed. And I like, too, at the bottom of your article, uh, telling people, hey, you know, if you've got another alternative, something maybe you missed, to send it your way. Right. And, there, and some, some of the readers in the comments on that article have come up with some really good suggestions, which I've incorporated into it. And I'll continue doing that as people leave comments. All right, very good, Ed, thank you so much. And if you want to learn more about Ed's article and some of those alternatives, make sure you check that out on ZDNet. Thanks for watching.